Today's gospel is the text for this morning's sermon, the Holy Gospel according to St. John, the 15th chapter. As a father has loved me, so have I loved you. Abide in my love. If you keep my commands, you will abide in my love, just as I have kept my father's commands and abide in his love. These things I have spoken to you, that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be full. This is my commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you. Greater love has no one than this, that someone lay down his life for his friends. You are my friends if you do what I command you. No longer do I call you servants, for the servant does not know what his master is doing. But I have called you friends, for all that I have heard from my Father I have made known to you. You did not choose me, but I chose you and appointed you that you should go and bear fruit and that your, shoot, your fruit should abide, so that whatever you ask the Father in my name, he may give it to you. These things I command you, so that you will love one another. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. So every once in a while, people will come up to me and tell me that I have an amazing memory. And I don't mean that as a humble brag. Uh, I think that they're wrong. And I think that if they followed me around for long enough, they would realize that I am actually the most forgetful person you will probably ever meet. Uh, If you haven't already seen an example of it this morning, I'll give you one. Um, When I was in seventh grade, I was walking onto the football field for my tackle football practice, and it was before I stepped onto the field that I realized that my helmet and shoulder pads were in my mom's trunk, and she had driven 20 minutes home, and I had nothing for practice. That's how forgetful I am, which is such a blessing to me that I had a parent who was my constant reminder. He would remind me until it was the most annoying thing in the world. He would remind me things like, do you have your shoes on? Which obviously something that I should have known, but I was also the kid that went to football practice without his helmet. I would have these reminders every day, every season, for everything that I had, which taught me the checklist that I needed to go through. Do I have the books? Do I have the things I need for practice after school? Is everything there? You see, these constant reminders were living with me because my dad was living with me. And that was a blessing I didn't realize until I left home. What we're talking about today is what it's like to live with the love of Jesus. The word he uses is to abide in his love. And I think that might be a little glimpse into what it looks like. It looks like having him there constantly reminding us over and over and over again, not necessarily of the things that we need to take with us, but of the love that he is always giving us. So we're going to walk through the passage that you heard Pastor Tig read a moment ago, and I hope it'll give us some tools to know how to abide in the love that Jesus has given. But I hope that it'll also make us desire to abide in that love more and more because we recognize just how valuable that love is. Because as I think back to those days, well, to being on the football field with no helmet and shoulder pads, there are reasons for the reminding. Because... Without the reminding, well, we're kind of useless. Our purpose falls away. Our significance uh, becomes questionable, whether I have any value in this place at all. And our world makes so much less sense. But this is what Jesus reminds us. As the Father has loved me, so I have loved you. Jesus' love is significant because of the quality of his love. It matters. And I think all of us know that we need love. 
All of us know that, and if you don't know that, you can turn the radio on, you can scroll through TikTok, Instagram, YouTube. There's, everybody has made a comment on love. There's nothing, I think, in our world that we have more written about than the topic of love. And yet not everybody's in agreement on what love is or what love should look like. And even those who are in agreement, even the best thing our world can do is only a shadow of the love that God shows us. You see, all of our cultural effort into love, to me, is like, it's like trying to redo that beautiful painting of the Last Supper. Only you have the skill to redo it in a stick figure kind of formation, Right? And it probably would get put in a museum somewhere because it's kind of eclectic. But it's not the beautiful thing that it was originally intended to be. You see, God's love for us is that beautiful thing. Jesus shows us the quality of his love in in verse 13. As he says, greater love has no one than this, that someone would lay down his life for his friends. And that's exactly what Jesus does on the cross He lays down his life for his friends. He does more than just wash them their feet. He does more than just teach them everything they're supposed to know. He actually gives up his own life and he even takes it back. He rises from the dead so that we could live with him forever. That's how much he loves his friends. This quality of love is something you don't find anywhere else. Jesus has a quality of love that actually fills our lives with value and significance. You matter because the God of the universe loves you enough to give up his life for you. You have value. That's one of the reasons we need to abide in that love. We can't risk forgetting that. We need that constant reminder. First, because we need to know we have value. The second part is that we need to make sense of our world. Because when you're on the football field with no helmet, it doesn't make sense. Or you'll take a hit and then it really won't make sense pretty quick. We need to make sense of our world. And that's what God's abiding love does for us. You see, because when we are living in this world, there are things that are hard to make sense of. And we often feel like, I have no idea what's going to happen next. When elections come, I have no idea what's going to happen in the fall. You look at at the world, we have all of these wars going on. We have no idea how they're going to turn out. For all of you confirmands, you're just a few months away from starting high school and You may have some idea, but a lot of you have no idea how that's going to go. What is that going to look like? See, I don't even know if I have 70 days left to live, 70 years left to live. There are a lot of things in this world that we don't know, but this is what the love of God does, is it it gives us a relationship that's more than just a relationship of authority with God, where, where we're like his, his servants who know only what we need to know to do the task, and we don't know why we're doing the task. We don't know why things are going on around us. God gives us the privilege of a relationship of love. And that relationship of love actually makes sense of our world a little bit. Not that I know what is going to happen and not that I even really know how it's going to happen. But you see, what Jesus says in these next verses is that he is sharing with his friends why these things are happening. He shares everything that the Father has told him with his friends. So we aren't like the servant of a master who doesn't know why things are happening. We're like the servant of a master who's also best friends with the boss's kid who's going to let us in on all the stuff we need to know. You see, when all of these things in our world that are so hard to make sense of come crashing down on us, we can go back to God's word. We can hear what God's will is. And later in this chapter, Jesus is going to tell us that the will of God is that everyone who believes in the Son will receive eternal life. And Jesus says, I will raise him up on the last day. 
this is the will of God. This is what God is working for. Even in the devastating things of life, and I know that sometimes that's hard to hear, even in the devastating things of life that are so hard to make sense of, we can know, even if I don't know how, I know that God is working. I know that he is bringing about his will and his will is that I would have faith and his will is that the people around me would have faith and would receive the eternal life and be raised up on the last day. See, the abiding love of God is a quality of love that gives us value and it's a relationship of love that makes sense of our life. And even more than that, to take it a step further, the, this relationship of love is not just so that we can receive the love of Jesus always, but this love actually gives us a purpose, and our purpose is to share that love. We see that in this next verse that Jesus goes on to explain to them that you actually belong here, you have a purpose, this love has filled you with it. You are chosen. That's significant. God chose you. God chose you and he appointed you. And he appointed you for this place and time for your situation of life. He didn't choose somebody else to put in your situation of life. He's the God of the universe. He could have chosen anyone. But he chose you. He appointed you. And he tells you to go and to bear fruit. And what is that fruit? That fruit is keeping his commandments. That's what he says in the beginning. And what is the commandment? He reviews it again with us here in verse 17. That you would love one another. You see, the commandments of Jesus are to know his love, to believe in him. That's what he says all the way back in John chapter 6. What is the works of God? The works of God is to believe in the one whom he has sent. And it is for the purpose of loving one another. That's one of the reasons you go through confirmation. It's one of the reasons we learn our catechisms, one of the reasons we still continually read our scriptures is so that we know what Jesus is talking about. We know how to love one another. But today, today even more than focusing on how, he's focusing on why. Because this is what you're on this earth for, to share this love. And that matters. I was having a conversation with a young man a while back now. And this conversation was a great conversation. He was telling me about all of the things that God had done in his life. It was amazing. And I just paused with him for a second and asked him, when you think about faith, what does your faith mean? mean to you? And his answer kind of surprised me because I expected him to say, well, it fills me up, reminds me that I'm loved. But, but what he said was that I used to, I used to kind of do things that would destroy myself because I didn't think it mattered. But my faith, what it means to me is it, it reminds me that God has me here for a reason and there are people that he puts me into their lives to serve. You see, this love, this abiding love fills you up with purpose so that every second of your life, all of the places you find yourself, all of the people you interact with, those interactions matter. I'm going to address the confirmands for just a second. You guys have gone through a lot of work. You've gone through a lot of work to learn about this love. And sometimes it can look like a graduation. But I want to challenge you that your confirmation is not a graduation. It's not like you're moving out of the spiritual house. But this is Jesus' challenge to you as well as to all of us. It's our turn to abide in the love. 
You're actually moving into the house. You're owning your faith today. If you're moving out of a spiritual house, it's moving out of the spiritual house of your parents into the spiritual house of Jesus where it's your responsibility to surround yourself with opportunities to be reminded. Be reminded of this love. Because whether we admit it or not, all of us spiritually are like seventh grade Pastor Sam who would forget his helmet to football practice. We need these reminders. So be here. Be here with us in worship. Surround yourself with times of of reading God's word, times of rhythms of prayer. Surround yourself with a water that reminds you of your baptism. And every time you hear, see, taste, touch, or smell water, remind yourself that you have this abiding love that has the quality of love to give you value, that has the relationship of love that makes sense of your life, and has the love that fills your life up with God's purposes. This abiding love lives with you. Move into the house and hear about that love constantly. And now may the peace of this love, which surpasses all understanding, guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. We have a weekly awakening question to reflect on. If you have your cell phones, you can take a picture of this. You can uh, write this down. This is one of those ways that we can continue to remind ourselves of the love of Jesus. Answer this question. How is the intimacy of God's abiding love seen in you?